today we are sharing how you can support meaningful learning in any instructional setting, whether you're remote, hybrid, or in the classroom. If you've been using Seesaw for remote learning, uh, we hope you'll take away some ideas and tips for transitioning back to the classroom um, and anyone who's in between. So my name is Allie. I'm a former fourth grade teacher. I currently work on the content team at Seesaw to support teachers like you to deepen engagement and increase outcomes for all students. Let's start by taking a moment to think about this past year. What a year it's been. Specifically, what, have, what are you proud of? The past year presented countless obstacles. Think about something you never thought would have been possible before, but that you made possible this year. Maybe you had students with inconsistent access to materials at home and you went the extra mile to support them to learn. Maybe your school has been back and forth between remote and in-person learning and you've rolled with the punches each time. Maybe you haven't seen your students in person in many, many months or all year, yet you maintain strong relationships with them and their family. These are all things to be incredibly proud of. Whatever you're proud of, hold on to that for this, this webinar today. We'd like to hear from you. What is the most pressing challenge facing schools, teachers, and students once it's safe to return to the classroom full time? Learning loss, burnout, teachers, students, and families. I think everyone's pretty tired right now. Rebuilding that classroom community, keeping families engaged or other. We know there's a lot facing us as we return to school. So hopefully we can find the tools and the strategies that help us address those challenges. I'm confident that all of you will be able to, you've already overcome so much. And that is why teachers are superheroes. As we face the unknown future, it's helpful to remember the tools we have to face the challenges ahead of us. Technology can be incredibly powerful, especially in a time like this because effective technology integration makes new and inconceivable things possible. It helps us address the problems that we're facing that you know, are kind of new, that are the result of something that we haven't faced before. So today we'll talk about the ways Seesaw can support you and your students in the months and years to come. Specifically, we'll talk about engagement, meeting students where they are to close those gaps and keeping families engaged no matter your instructional setting. These are three levers we know lead to positive learning outcomes. Today, you will learn how to implement Seesaw effectively in any setting, whether in-person, hybrid, or remote. Even if you've been using Seesaw a long time and you're already implementing it effectively, we have some new ideas here for you uh, to help you know, bridge the gap between remote and in-person learning. So uh, there's really something for everyone today. We'll focus on how you can integrate Seesaw into instruction, close gaps in mastery, and build upon relationships with family. Let's dive in. Integrate Seesaw into instruction. This is not just for remote learning, but in-person learning too. The strategies we cover will uh, be applicable to both settings. Um, so hopefully you can see sort of how things can transition from remote to in-person and even vice versa. We'll show you how to harness the power of Seesaw's multimodal tools across a variety of common instructional strategies. These are four common ways that teachers integrate Seesaw into instruction. Why should you add technology, specifically Seesaw, to these strategies? One of the most powerful reasons to use Seesaw in centers and during independent work time is that it gives you a glimpse into every student's learning process, even when you aren't able to work with them directly. It's like you're able to have one-on-one -on -one conferences with every student every day. That's pretty powerful. It also adds a layer of accountability. So students are more motivated to put forth their best effort uh, because they know that their teacher, their family members, their peers uh, will see their work on Seesaw. And that really speaks to the power of having an authentic audience for your learning. For self-reflection and SEL, Seesaw makes it really easy to integrate routines into your day-to-day taking advantage of transitions or small windows of downtime to reinforce these important skills. Teachers find that the start or end of the day after lunch or recess or even in between subjects are a good time for these routines. All you need to do is assign a seesaw activity and those little moments add up. So let's take a deeper look at how it works. 
For independent practice or social emotional learning, maybe even reflection, uh, you may give a mini lesson or demo first. Maybe you want to teach kids about growth mindset before they practice on their own, or you know, maybe it's an academic skill like summarizing a text or multiplication strategies. You may give that mini lesson or demo first. If you're in person, of course, you would give this whole class or small group, as you already know, do bread and butter. If you're remote, you may give the lesson on a video call or even record a video for students to watch on demand. More on that in a minute. Then you find or create a Seesaw activity and assign it. Students follow up your mini lesson or demo with an independent practice activity on Seesaw that is engaging and reinforces that learning. We have some ready to assign Seesaw activities to help you get started. We'll show you where to find these in just a second. For centers, Seesaw teachers especially love using math and literacy activities. For math, students can capture and explain anything they do with manipulatives, that work that otherwise would get lost once they clean it up. They can also complete practice problems and get that repeated uh, practice that they need in order to really nail those skills. For literacy, students can use the video or microphone tools to practice fluency and listen to themselves read. Students love this. I cannot emphasize that enough. They love to hear themselves read and it gives them an opportunity to uh, self-assess, which is so valuable. Students can also practice specific skills like writing their name. This rainbow name writing activity is particularly popular. For independent practice, it's really helpful to leverage multimodal tools to make practice more engaging. Students can practice the skill you taught in your mini lesson, like summarizing a text here, or they can complete hands-on learning and use Seesaw to explain their thinking. Multimodal tools add this layer of creativity and it makes higher order thinking visible. And that just isn't possible with pencil and paper. Reflection is also easy on Seesaw because students have all of their learning captured in one place. You can, they can look back and see how much they've grown, which helps to develop that important growth mindset. And finally, social emotional learning. Really easy to integrate these into transitions or downtime like we talked about. Students can complete more general activities like this um, daily emoji, emoji check-in. It'll allow you to kind of get a temperature check on how your students are doing. And you can strategically check in with students who maybe indicate that they're having a harder day today. Or you can have students practice specific skills like the power of yet. Uh, so any SEL topic that you want to address, even if it's, you know, community building or just checking in with how students are doing, CESA, there's a Seesaw activity for all of that. Or you can create your own. We'll talk about that too. In terms of how students complete Seesaw activities, the experience is always the same for students, whether they're in classroom or at home. Integrating Seesaw means consistency, so supporting students to access meaningful learning experiences no matter what happens. So if you have to suddenly return to remote learning, students are already used to using Seesaw. They're already used to learning on Seesaw. And so that experience is the same with the, whether they're in the classroom or whether they're at home. And that consistency can be so valuable, especially in times of uncertainty. A quick refresher, after you assign an activity, it will show in students activities tab. They simply find the activity to complete and click add response. That's that green button uh, highlighted here. You'll notice on the right, there's a to-do section, an in-progress section, and a done section to help keep things organized. All right, here's an example of a student capturing their thinking after reading a book. The microphone tool gives every student the opportunity to share their voice by explaining or reflecting on their learning. Imagine getting this type of response from every student. David is a person that just wants to have fun, but he has a little too much fun and gets carried away and doesn't really listen and he also doesn't really like to clean up and stuff. So you can get insights into students' comprehension or mastery of a skill and every student's able to share their voice in this way. And students can also practice right in Seesaw. So in this case, the teacher set up a practice problem and the student uses dr the draw and record or the microphone tool to show their work and explain their answer. So this is like sitting with each with each student and watching them and hearing them think through a problem, but every student is able to do this. So you can, you know, check into those students who missed the mark um, and see where that breakdown and understanding occurs so that you can reteach it or address it the very next day. I think 23 
does not belong because it is a prime number in three times three equals nine, four times four equals 16, and five times five equals 25. And 23 only has one and 23 as its factors. So you get a real sense of why students made the choice that they made. And if this student had you know, made a mistake, you would see where they made that mistake, which is so helpful in pushing learning further because you know where the breakdown in understanding is happening. So let's talk about logistics. So in the classroom, of course, students use classroom materials. Think library books, manipulatives, art supplies. For devices, students can work with individual devices or shared devices. For example, if you have shared devices, integrating Seesaw into senders or stations is likely your best bet. Or students can take turn. Maybe for an SEL routine, one, student's com one student completes a Seesaw activity while the other independently reads. All you need to do in the classroom is print and post directions or tell students what to do. You're already pros at this. For remote learning, which many of you have already been doing, uh, students may use materials provided by school or creative alternatives found at home. Think Legos as math manipulatives. <clears throat> you can even add digital versions of materials right in Seesaw. For example, Seesaw has base 10 blocks built right into the shapes tool. Or you can um, upload pictures of different types of money or other um, objects that you may have physical versions of in class but need to be digital on Seesaw. And then for directions, uh, you may assign a weekly schedule or post a weekly schedule to the class journal and pin it to the top. We'll show you how to do this in just a second. So you can kind of see that there are a lot of parallels with implementing Seesaw in the classroom and implementing Seesaw remotely. Um, there's just a few tweaks you make if you're moving back and forth. Um, for example, if you're going back and forth, you may want to create a system for students to bring their devices or any key materials between home and school. Uh, but when it comes to using, when it comes to students using Seesaw, remember that you're providing amazing consistency because the student experience, how they engage with activities is always, always the same. So these little systems you can tweak whether you're in the classroom or remote, um, but the Seesaw experience is always the same. So let's take a closer look. We're going to demo this live. So we're going to show you how you can embed a video into a Seesaw activity. We'll create an activity, add a template, record or upload our video, and then we'll assign it. So I'm going to pop into my Seesaw class here, and I'm going to go to the activity library, which is assign activity. Here I am. Um, and I actually pre-made um, just the beginnings of an activity. So you didn't have to watch me enter all of this in, but when you're creating an activity, you want to have a descriptive title. Maybe you add a few sentences here that explain to students why this is important or you know, why you chose uh, this activity for them. And then step-by-step -step instructions. And here we are with the template. So I already started this, but we're gonna click down here under student template. This is what students respond on. So here I have a section. I'm gonna have students make Play-Doh balls and then practice taking them away and or practice adding them in different ways to work on um, that number sense addition and subtraction. So before students do this, um, I want to record a video of myself modeling it for them so they know exactly what to do. So in this way, I'm kind of cloning myself. Um, it's amazing. You're cloning yourself because you're recording yourself demoing something that students can access on demand as many times as they need it. Um, they always has, have access to your demo uh, so that they can really master the concept. Uh, this, support, it, this supports independence and it also supports students to access this content on their own, teaches them to be more independent. I'm going to, um, if I had a video already recorded, I may upload that. So I can click on the photo icon here and I may click upload. That way I can drag in a file of a video that I've already created. But in this case, I'm actually gonna just record a video live. So I'm gonna click this video icon here and here I am, hello. So you would click the uh, video button to start. 
and you'd say, hello, students, you know, today I'm going to model how to use Play-Doh and you'd show them how to do the Play-Doh and you'd model maybe an example activity. When you're done, you can click this green done button. And here's my video. You'll notice I can move it all around the screen and I can resize it to make it as big or as small as I want. Here, I'm gonna put it down here. Ideally in this you know, video, I was showing them how to make the Play-Doh balls and then doing an example. Students can watch this video as many times as they need in order to master the concept. And then they can go into the next pages to practice on their own. In this case, we have students taking a picture of their work and then using the microphone tool here to explain their answer. That allows them to add a layer of voice over this page um, for them to share their thinking. Now, you may be, uh, if you're a premium user, Seesaw Plus or Seesaw for School, you have all of this space using multi-page. But if you are a free user, you do need to make sure all of this is on one page. So I would probably, you know, make this video smaller and then I could include these practice problems just all on one page. All right. My template is created. I have my demo video. Um, I have my practice problems for them and I'm going to press the green check mark and I'm going to press save. And here we go. I can see my template has my video and I'm ready to assign. All I do is click assign and it goes to my class. And if you have multiple classes, you can you know, assign it to all of your classes. Um, and let's see what it looks like in the class. So I signed it and now it's in the activities tab here. Students click add response. Each student, I'll show you a sample student, gets their own copy of the template. They can watch the video, they can use creative tools to complete the assignment. Um, and when they're done, they click the green check, as you may know. Now, uh, we also talked about um, possibly posting a weekly schedule to your journal. So maybe if you want students uh, to really pay attention to this activity, you can pin it to the top by clicking the three dots and pin to top. This will make it so that this activity always stays at the top of your feed. Sometimes you may wanna post an announcement to students. So in this case, I would use the green add button to post student work. I'm gonna upload um, a weekly schedule. And so this tells students what activities or assignments they need to complete each day. I dropped that file and I just created it on Google Slides, downloaded it and dragged it right into Seesaw. I'm gonna click the green check. Here it is on the canvas. You can see I've assigned some reading activities each day, some writing activities um, and then other. And I'm gonna to post to all students. That way all students see my post. All students can access this weekly schedule. Here it is in the journal, everyone can see it. And if I want this to pin to top so that students can access it really easily, I can click the three dots, pin to top. Now this post will stay at the top of all students' journal feeds. So as they're working through activities throughout the week, they can reference this, make sure they get everything done. So that's one way to kind of keep things organized um, if you're remote, though if you wanna use this in person, you can as well. All right, so that is how you embed videos in activities. Um, it's a great way to uh, just make sure students have resources that they can access on demand independently. And it's, it's helpful whether you're in person or remote. For remote, it's a way you can deliver instruction. But if you're in person, it's a way to support students during independent work time, during centers time. Um, it allows you to kind of be multiple places at once because you're able to provide those demos, those mini lessons for students, embed it right in a Seesaw activity. Um, and students can access it as many times as they need to be successful. We have some resources related to this topic. Uh, we have a step-by-step -step guide that walks you through integrating uh, Seesaw into these four common instructional strategies. Of course, there are more instructional strategies where you can integrate Seesaw, but these are just the four we chose to focus on for now. In this guide, you'll find links to all of the activities we showed you today, plus a few more so that you have a, a starting point um, for assigning activities to your students. Uh, plus we have tips for how to implement these strategies in any setting. 
uh, kind of breaks it down. It's just right there for you to read. So if you missed a few details um, in this presentation, this step-by-step -step guide is going to be very helpful just to reinforce uh, the strategies we talked about so far. If you're new to Seesaw and still figuring out how to create activities, we want to point out that there's a free on-demand training called Create Your First Activity. It's under 10 minutes and you'll learn how to create Seesaw activities with templates like I made um, with multi-page templates. Remember, Seesaw activities are how you can deliver instruction on Seesaw. So if you haven't mastered this skill yet, we highly recommend you check out this training. It'll be incredibly useful whether you're remote or in person. The main idea here, classrooms that create Seesaw routine ensure students always have access to meaningful learning experiences in any instructional setting. Plus, students absolutely love Seesaw. They can't wait to learn when they get to use multimodal learning tools. It deepens learning and it deepens engagement. It's kind of a win-win. Where might Seesaw fit in your classroom? Do you see Seesaw fitting in your centers or stations? Maybe you have shared devices um, and you wanna leverage Seesaw there. Can you see it being in, um, helpful for independent practice after you give that mini lesson using Seesaw's multimodal tools to deepen learning, deepen engagement? Uh, do you see yourself using Seesaw for reflection, social emotional learning or something else? And we'll move on to our second learning objective, which is using Seesaw to close gaps in mastery. We know that integrating Seesaw into instruction ensures students always have access to meaningful learning. So now we'll explore how Seesaw can help you close gaps, those, um, you know, and address the learning loss that you've seen over the past year. Classrooms have always had a range of experiences and levels of mastery, right? This isn't a new challenge. However, the magnitude of this challenge is very new. We're seeing larger gaps in mastery than ever before. Thankfully, Seesaw can help, and that's what we're gonna talk about now. Seesaw helps close gaps in mastery in a few key ways. First, teachers can add multimodal scaffolds to materials that increase access and comprehension. Students can use multimodal tools to show learning, which gives them more ways to demonstrate what they've mastered and where they still need more support. And teachers can assign differentiated activities to specific students in just a few clicks. Saves you so much time. Students are supported to engage with rigorous content, demonstrate mastery even in an alternative way, and privately receive the supports that they need. What's more, Seesaw multimodal tools make thinking and learning visible. So you gain real-time insights on student progress. Identify where, what students are doing well, where students need more support and how they can use, and how you can use this insight to inform instruction. This insight is powerful and results in greater gains in less time. Here's how it works. We'll look at five research-based multimodal scaffolds you can add to Seesaw activities that aren't necessarily possible without technology. First, you can include multimodal directions when creating an activity. Often, directions are the first barrier to entry for students. So including text, visual, and audio directions ensures students aren't blocked before they even begin. When you create an activity, you'll see where you can type and add voice directions. To add the icons in the type directions, you can see on this example, uh, for step one, you see the add response button. For step two, you see the Seesaw camera icon. In order to add those icons, you use Seesaw icon shortcuts. If you've never seen this before, it's pretty easy. You simply type the text shortcut and when you click save, it transforms into the icon. Uh, so if you add uh, you know, a colon, the word add, and then another colon at the end, no spaces, it'll show the add response button in its place. Super handy. It's a great way to ensure students know exactly what they need to do once they get into the activity. Um, and it supports students to access uh, the directions. In addition to including multimodal directions on the activity card, so the activity card is what you see here. This is what students see when they go to their activities tab. This is kind of like the intro to the activity, but you can also include multi multimodal directions directly in your activity template. Uh, we like to do this because it supports students to complete the activity page by page, step by step, 
you know, they don't have to click back into the full activity directions, you know, and find where they are and figure out what to do. They're just brought through, you know, the steps as they go through the pages. Um, you may use labels to type what students to do. Uh, maybe you record a video like we just did to explain the task or to give a demo. Um, or maybe you upload photos or other videos or other images to support access. But um, we love adding these kind of step-by-step -step directions directly on the activity template, especially if you're a premium user with access to multi-page. Our second scaffold is uh, what we just talked about. This is definitely one of our favorites. Our teachers love this too. Um, it's embedding videos directly onto the canvas. In the context of differentiation, this strategy is incredibly powerful because you can provide students with mini lessons or demos catered to them. Um, but even if it's just a video that you share with all students, it ensures that students can access it as many times as they need. You know, sometimes students just need that repetition to see it again and again. When you're just presenting to the class, there's no rewind and play again button, but with Seesaw there is. Students can click play as many times as they need to master the concept. Uh, so if you are supporting English language learners, uh, you might even record videos in their home language to increase access if that's where they are. So there's really a range of ways you can use this. Remember, you can record a video or upload a video file. Um, if you want to use um, YouTube videos or videos from other websites, you will need to link to them. So you can still link to those external videos. Um, it just will take students out of Seesaw for them to view it and they can just come right back to finish the activity. The third scaffold that you may know is helpful is activating that background knowledge. So maybe you have students complete a KWL chart or complete sentence stems, watch a video or look at a picture related to the topic or even just brainstorm. Students use labels, pens, photos, videos, the microphone, shapes, and more to communicate their ideas and connect to prior learning. Um, if you are a premium user and you have multi-page, this is a great um, strategy to add as like the first page of the activity to get kids thinking about the topic and what they already know. Um, but if you're a free user, you can always assign this kind of as a, a, an activity for students to do before they then jump into the, the actual activity. Our um, fourth scaffold is adding visual cues. Uh, so maybe you use labels to add draggable word banks. In this case, students could drag these labels and kind of fill in the blanks. So you're supporting students um, who are developing that vocabulary. You can include emojis and labels and you can upload pictures and illustrations. So maybe you add these scaffolds for a writing exercise like you see here or to support students to read a passage. Maybe you include some pictures that you know, help them access the content, or you can make word problems more accessible. There are so many ways to use visuals to support access and comprehension across subjects. And our fifth scaffold is time to talk. The video and microphone tool are so powerful. We've already talked about them quite a bit today, um, but they're so powerful because they allow every student to verbally process their learning on a regular basis. We know that verbal processing helps students better process and retain their learning. And even students who may feel a little reluctant, a little shy to participate in class, they feel safe sharing on Seesaw. So you'll be able to hear from more students, so students that you don't normally get to hear from, um, and it empowers students to develop their voice um, and to really take agency. For students, um, engagement really soars when they know their voice matters. We love the video and microphone tools. In addition to providing uh, multimodal scaffolds within the activity, um, once students have access and engaged with the content, you can take it a step further and you can give students choice in output so that they can demonstrate mastery in ways that work best for them. So if you have students, you know, in different parts of the learning process, sometimes, you know, a pencil and paper just isn't the best way to communicate what they can do. Um, but multimodal tools really give them a way to share everything that they've mastered, even if it's um, not necessarily able to be shared, you know, in writing. This ensures that they're able to feel successful, which we know is so important, especially when there are those gaps. Um, oftentimes the mode of output is a barrier for them to really show what they can do. So when we're trying to close gaps in mastery, giving uh, students choice uh, gives you 
a more complete, accurate view of students' abilities, right? They're able to demonstrate what they can do. So you know, like, it's not the mode of output that's the, that um, is the barrier. It's, it's, uh, it's something else. You can identify where the breakdown in understanding is happening and address that. And once you have us um, created these differentiated activities, you can assign them to select students. So Seesaw Pros, you already know this, but just as a refresher, when you click assign, you can click edit students folder skills. And then in the students tab, you can click, uh, or you can check the students that you want to share to. Only those students will see this differentiated activity. Um, so it's very private. No one's called out for having a different um, activity you're really able to provide these, this differentiation in a private way. So let's see it in action. Let's differentiate an activity. All right, so I'm gonna hop back into, oops, I'm gonna hop back into my Seesaw class and I'm going to show you this in action as a way to reinforce what we just talked about. So I created this activity uh, in advance for the sake of time, but if you wanted to create a new activity, you just click this big create new activity button so this is actually helpful to see, um, you know, maybe you have an activity that you want to assign to, you know, your larger classroom, um, but you want to differentiate it slightly for select students. So you already have this activity made and what you can do is click on the three dots and you're going to want to click copy and edit activity. So this is going to make a copy of it. So you don't lose your original activity. So I'll just call this group two. It's helpful to add a, you know, a slightly different title to the activity name so that you can keep track of which, which activity is which. So uh, this would be my group two, mental movies while reading. You can see here again, I have this, this a few lines to say why this is important. I have my step-by-step -step directions with my icon shortcuts. Here I'll show the mic and I even added emojis. And the way I did this was I went to a website like emojicopy.com and you can copy and paste, copy any of these emojis and paste them uh, right into the activity directions here. So helpful tip. And then I also wanna make sure I have voice directions. So I would click add voice directions, click the mic to begin recording, and then I would just record the directions. This gives students another way of um, accessing uh, what they need to do so they're successful. And it shows up right underneath, students click play. Um, and again, if you're supporting English language learners, maybe you record this in their home language so that um, it helps them access the directions even more. And what I'm going to do is edit the template. So here I'm going to have students, you know, read this passage and then make a mental movie. And the passage that I chose already has an image here, but if I wanted to add another image, I could. I simply click the picture icon. I could take a photo or I can upload a photo. Um, alternatively, you know, if my picture just decided not to work like it just did, um, I can click on the label tool and just copy and paste an emoji. So maybe I wanna just have a picture of a dog on a leash so that students know what that looks like. So here I am, I can copy my emoji, I can change the style, I can make it much bigger so that students really have that graphic as well. So emojis are really quick to add, or you can upload photos that reinforce the content. I could even upload a video of myself maybe reading this passage. So again, you know, you can click the video icon and do that. And let's see, I've already given students um, options for, you know, how to show their learning, but maybe instead um, of this, use the mic or the video to describe it, right? So we can maybe give them more choice if they need. Um, and we can kind of go through the different pages and add videos, add pictures, add emojis, or add more labels um, that help them access the content. And then if we wanted to add another page to activate background knowledge, maybe we do that by clicking add page. We can even drag it to the top. And then maybe we do a brainstorm all about um, pets or something, you know, it's a, uh, what do pets like? And we can just have this be maybe like a brainstorm web um, or maybe you teach some vocabulary. So um, in, the, in the story, they talk about elevators. Maybe you teach students that word, um, but there's a lot of ways that you can use the creative tools to build that background knowledge or activate that background knowledge before students jump into the task. Okay, so I'm gonna click my green check and I'm gonna click save. Always remember to save your work um, and let's assign it to select students. 
I'm going to click assign, edit students, folders, and skills. If all students are selected, just click all students to unselect them. And I'll assign this to Alex, Carl, and Lauren. Check. Assign to one class. Now you may be wondering, what about the rest of the students? So in that case, I would go back to this original assignment and I would assign it to everyone except Alex, Carl, and Lauren. By doing this, the rest of my class gets this activity that's appropriate for them while my group two gets the version of the activity that meets their needs. Some resources. So again, we have a step-by-step -step guide bit.ly slash formative insights on Seesaw. These links are case sensitive, so make sure you take uh, note of that. And I saw some of you in the chat asking about how to make movable templates. So this on-demand training here is what you're gonna wanna watch. It's just a few minutes, but it shows you how to do that, how to make advanced activity templates in Seesaw. Um, it goes into a lot of really fun uh, tips and tricks that you can use to make your activities pretty advanced and engaging for students. So. Uh, this is bit.ly slash advanced ADV activity templates. And again, we'll share this in the email. Using Seesaw for differentiation helps you support all learners to access and demonstrate mastery in ways that work best for them. With Seesaw's powerful multimodal tools, you'll gain real-time insights into student progress and you'll see greater gains in less time. So let's hear from you. Uh, which differentiation strategy feels most impactful for your students? Is it multimodal instructions? Is it embedding that video? Maybe activating the background knowledge uh, with multi-page? Maybe it's adding visuals, incorporating time to talk, multimodal outputs and choice, or something else. Different things are working for different classrooms, which is great because that's all what differentiation is about, right? Um, different strategies are going to be more effective for your classroom, whereas another strategy might be most effective for another classroom. Um, and that's kind of the beauty of having so many tools in your tool belt is that, you know, you can kind of pick and choose what's going to what's going to be helpful for you. Um, and our final learning objective today is building upon relationships with families. We know that while students were closed, uh, families may have been more involved in their child's learning than ever before, which was great. Um, and we can continue to foster these relationships even when students return to the classroom. How do we do this? Uh, with the family app. When students were remote, you may not have connected families on the family app. Uh, you may have just used the class app to communicate with students and families all in one place. Um, and you may even be thinking, there's an entirely separate app for parents and family members? Uh, yes, there is. <laughs> there's a reason it's separate, we'll get into that. And it is quite powerful. Families are connected on the family app. They can see and engage with their child's learning with no additional work for you. When a family member is connected, um, anytime a student posts to their journal, their family sees it in the family app, which is awesome. This supports that ongoing positive communication with families, uh, which you may know is essential for strong homeschool partnerships, right? It ensures that uh, families are getting just regular updates on all the amazing things their kids are doing. So it's really uh, a powerful tool. On the family app, uh, families can see all of their child's learning in one place. Uh, you can see here, uh, there's that place for them to add a comment at the bottom of the post. So families can add comments to their kids' posts. Uh, you won't believe students' faces light up when they see that their family member has commented on the post. It just like makes their day, it's so cute. Um, and it really, you know, it just automatically improves the quality of work because kids know that their family member is gonna see this and they can't wait. So in addition to seeing their child's work, uh, remember families can only see their own child's work or uh, post their child is tagged in. So they're not seeing anything else from other kids, um, but they can also message with the teacher all in the same place. So now we're in the inbox tab. Um, as you may know, teachers can send announcements to all families. In addition to typed text, teachers can include multimodal attachments like photos, videos, PDFs, and more. For example, you might give families more background about content or new units of study. Maybe you record a video kind of explaining what's coming ahead, or you maybe uh, snap a picture of, you know, what to expect moving forward. Maybe you record a video demoing a strategy 
families can use at home. Um, in that way, they uh, are able to support that uh, learning outside of the classroom. So there's a lot of different ways to use the multimodal tools um, and families receive those announcements and messages right in this app. So in this inbox tab, they get the announcement um, and they also get, um, can respond to the announcement as a private message to the teacher. And you'll notice this uh, blue plus sign at the bottom of the screen. Family members can even reply to the message uh, with a multimodal attachment of their own. So um, they may add a photo or a video of kids learning at home, which just gives you this powerful window into kids' home environment, uh, which can deepen relationships and help, help you meet students where they are. So Seesaw for Schools administrators can send announcements as well as teachers. If you are a Seesaw for Schools administrator joining us today, in your admin dashboard, you click on the announcements tab and then you click new school announcement. If you're a teacher, you click the green add button and then you click send announcement. Both admins and teachers can, like I said, include that multimodal attachment. You simply click this button and you can add photo, video, PDF, all sorts of things uh, to support families. And here are some ideas. Again, you know, a video demoing a strategy, a PDF with important information or photos and videos of special moments throughout the day. So it's just a really one-stop shop, uh, easy place to keep families in the loop. We can't forget about translation. Families with devices set to a language other than English have the option to translate all type text in one click. So that includes text you type in an announcement or a private message. Uh, it includes comments on student work or anything typed in the note tool. Uh, the family experience looks like this. You can kind of see this um, animation here. They just see the C translation button and then it translates uh, into their, the language their um, device is set to. So this is a really great way to ensure all families are supported to connect um, by reducing language barriers and welcoming them to engage in their, in their child's learning. Um, I saw a question of how to invite family. So now you're like, okay, I get it. This looks amazing. I want to get families connected. How do I do it? Um, if you're a Seesaw for Schools administrator, you can bulk invite families. On the overview tab under admin tools, you click get families data and invite families. So this button that's highlighted here um, and follow the prompts. It's pretty simple. If you're a teacher, you click the plus families button on the bottom of bottom right hand side of your screen and also follow the prompts. And we get a lot of questions about like, what do each of the views look like? So we're just going to take a minute to pop into each of their views. So I'm gonna start with the teacher because I'm already logged in as a teacher. Um, here, you know, you have your journal tab, your activities tab, your inbox tab. So this is where I can see all of the communications I have going. If I sent student announcements, it's in this uh, section here. All announcements I've sent to families are in this section where it says family announcements. And then underneath is where I will see individual uh, private messages with families. So here I sent an announcement with a strategy. I got a message back from Miss Anderson saying that their child played all weekend, which is awesome. Um, as a teacher, if you don't want to chat, you can always manage um, family preferences here. So um, check out the family section in class settings to kind of control what families can do. All right, now let's pop in as an admin. Here we are. So I'm gonna go to the announcements tab. The admin dashboard doesn't have an inbox. Um, Right now, administrators can only send announcements to teachers, families, and or students, um, but replies are not supported at this time. So you can create a new announce by, announcement by clicking new school announcement. And then once you send it, you can see who has seen it, right? So here we have this, con you know, this list of people who have seen the announcement. So at least you can see who's viewed it, but replies are not supported for administrator announcements at this time. And finally, let's pop into the family view. All right, so here I am. Um, this, you know, the home tab shows me all the recent posts from my student or their um, or posts are tagged in. So I see this weekly schedule, which is great. 
Um, and then if I go to the inbox tab, I can see announcements from my children's teacher. So these all say Seesaw because this is a demo class, but you know, you would see your child's teacher's name here and you know, you can click into any thread. Maybe you have two or three students connected uh, on Seesaw. And so you have messages from each of their teachers all in the same place, which is awesome because it doesn't clog the email. All right, there is um, a step-by-step -step guide for admin at this link. Uh, so this covers bulk inviting families. Um, if you are a teacher, you want to check out this family engagement kit. It gives you everything you need to get families connected, no matter your setting right now, whether you're in person or remote, you have everything you need. Um, and then there's a on-demand training all about announcements and messages. It kind of gives you a re refresher of the inbox tab, um, similar to what we just went through. We know that family involvement is one of the best predictors of student success. So connecting families on the family app helps you build upon the relationships that you've worked so hard to foster during remote learning. This way, all families are supported to become co-owners of their child's learning outcomes, which is what we want. Are your families connected on the family app? We'd love to know. If you're not sure, you can always click on this wrench icon. These are your class settings. Go under families and click manage families. And this is where you can see who has a connected family and who does not and a shortcut to invite families. So the last part, let's make a plan. Always good to make a plan. Uh, take a minute just to think, you know, we covered a lot today, um, but you know, what really stands out to you as um, a strategy that you wanna bring into your classroom? What is the top strategy? You have to pick one that you want to, in that you want to implement whether it's integrating Seesaw into centers or independent practice, self-reflection or SEL, using it to differentiate instruction and close those gaps in mastery, use Seesaw to engage families, something else. Like we said, you know, every classroom is going to face its own challenge. And so we're just hoping to provide you with um, a handful of resources and tools that you can pull from when you need. So, um, Pretty much everything that you see here today can be found at web.seesaw.me slash learn dash anywhere. You can find um, the step-by-step -step guides for everything we talked about, the activities we showed you today, uh, links to more trainings, um, even bonus resources like this one pager for transitioning back to class. This goes over kind of like the sign in differences and setting up devices. So this is very helpful. So this, this uh, website, this landing page is gonna be really helpful. It, it legitimately has everything that we talked about today. So if you go one place, go here. Uh, we are so grateful for you spending time with us today. We always enjoy you joining us. Uh, we appreciate everything that you do. Uh, we hope that this has been helpful for you and we'll see you again soon. So.